from Wikipedia, the Free Encyclopedia, Elizabeth II. Queen Elizabeth II, Elizabeth Alexandra Mary, born the 21st of April 1926, is the constitutional monarch of 16 sovereign states, known as the Commonwealth Realms, and their territories and dependencies, as well as the head of the 54-member Commonwealth of Nations. She is Supreme Governor of the Church of England, and in some of her realms carries the title Defender of the Faith, as part of her full title. And here is a picture, an image of Queen Elizabeth II, 2007, and she is Queen of the Commonwealth Realms, February 6, 1952 to present day. Her coronation was 2nd of June, 1953. So as you see in Wikipedia, it's a simple website. Anyone watching this video can go and research and punch up Queen Elizabeth II. Now what comes up is that it states that she is the constitutional monarch of 16 states and 54 member Commonwealth nations. She is the constitutional monarch. She is also considered or has the title or designation of the governor of the Church of England, she's the governor, the head governor, and also the defender of the faith. She's known as a defender of the faith in her full title. So this is actually a designation that the Queen takes, defender of the faith. Now notice that she's titled Queen Elizabeth II, Canada, Proclamation Dissolving Parliament, David Johnston, Canada. Elizabeth II, by the grace of God of the United Kingdom, Canada and her other realms and territories, Queen, Head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the Faith. To our beloved and faithful Senators of Canada, members elected to serve in the House of Commons of Canada, and to all whom these presents may in any way concern. A pro Lamation. Whereas we have thought fit by and with the advice of our Prime Minister of Canada to dissolve the present Parliament of Canada. Now scroll down, last line, last paragraph. At our government house in our city of Ottawa, this 26th day of March, in the year of our Lord, 2011, and in the 60th year of our reign. Notice that, our reign. God Save the Queen by Command Richard de Cerveny, Deputy Register General of Canada. So Queen Elizabeth II is a real living being. She is real. And she was coronated, she was coronated, given the title of the Constitution Monarch in June 2nd, 1953. So Queen Elizabeth her Majesty the Queen is real. Well, when you see that mentioning in the laws, in the enactments, it's not stating a fictitious character in the olden days. It's stating Queen Elizabeth II. Now when you look here in Canada, when they were dissolving Parliament in 2011, who did they write to? Who was it that they addressed to? They wrote to Queen Elizabeth II. And notice who, what they called her. They called her the Defender of the Faith in her full title. Oath or Affirmation of Citizenship, Canada. I swear or affirm that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, Queen of Canada, her heirs and successors, and that I will faithfully observe the laws of Canada and fulfill my duties as a Canadian citizen. So the Queen and we're talking about Queen Elizabeth II, the one who is alive now. The Queen is the Sovereign of Canada. She's considered a Sovereign. And we're her subjects, the Canadian citizens. And she is the Queen of Canada. And a Canadian citizen, a Canadian citizen, gives allegiance and takes an oath, an oath of allegiance to this Queen. Not a fictitious character, but a real living being. Now, in the Canadian Citizenship Act, if you notice, 
Did you notice what it said? It said that we swear and give our allegiance to Queen Elizabeth and they qualified it. Queen Elizabeth II, Queen of Canada. Not Queen Elizabeth I, the one who all this was built on, who would be a fictitious character now because she would be dead and she's not living anymore. But that's not what it says here. It says our pledge, or the Canadian citizen, its pledge is to Queen Elizabeth II. And as you just saw, Queen Elizabeth II is that same one who is alive, who was, who was born in 1926. So, Queen Elizabeth II, she is alive, she's alive, and uh, we give, or the person gives, their allegiance to her. So, as a Canadian citizen, as a Canadian citizen, who's considered that person, you've pledged your allegiance to the Queen. Now, she makes regulations and enactments, what we know as law, we just simply know it as law, but what they're really termed is regulations and enactments or statutes and gives them force of law. The queen, in law, she enacts them. Enacts them. That's why when you read the statutes and the regulations, you'll say, uh, Her Majesty the Queen, Elizabeth, such and such and such, erects such and such law. And then they start naming all the laws that she has given force of law. But it's her who's apparently doing it. And she declares them to be law, and then she enforces them on the Canadian citizen because you are her subject and you've given allegiance to her so you have no choice now it's almost all like a old Hollywood movie when you watch those uh, movies in Hollywood and you see that there's a king and he's reigning over certain subjects and all the subjects have given allegiance to the king and uh, you see the soldiers walking in the street with the, the pikes and the, the swords and they're keeping order of law in the streets and the king he's ruling all his subjects that's exactly what's transpiring here in Canada but it's just all, all hidden through words and in the law. And most of us don't realize what's going on. But if we could take a video re recorder, just like I'm recording here, this video here, and actually uh, make a film, like a movie, this could play out. It would be better than most of the movies that are out there in Hollywood. It's so ridiculous that we, as human beings, are being considered a, a subject, a servant of Her Majesty, that we have given away our freedoms, we have given them away by pledging an allegiance of oath to Her Majesty. So all our fundamental rights and freedoms that we are, have, that are intrinsically attached to us as human beings, as men and women, we have no longer the rights to them because we've given them away and we've pledged allegiance to her. And she has set up rules and regulations that uh, her subjects follow. And if you don't, well then her police force, her uh, enforcers will come and uh, try and make you submit to these laws, whether it's the police uh, or the lawyer or the justice system or whatever. That's what's transpiring. And it seems that nobody wants to talk about this. As crazy as this seems, as ridiculous as this seems, that this is actually what's going on in law, that this is how they're governing Canada, like an old Hollywood script where they have an old woman who, who's a real and living, Queen Elizabeth II, claiming to be the sovereign of our country that has nothing to do with our country, and we are her subjects and servants, that we've pledged an oath of allegiance to her. Most of us could care less about who she is. We don't want to harm her, we have no negative thoughts towards her, but she doesn't impact our life and we could care less about her. And when we have woken up and understand that that's what they've done to us and they're declaring in law that we have pledged allegiance to her, most of us are saying that's a joke. I've never done that and I would never do that because it strips away my fundamental right as a human being. My fundamental right is that I don't have to be in association, I don't have to serve anyone or anything. And by making me say that I've given up my I've given allegiance to her and I've pledged an oath to her this living being who I've never met who I've never seen how ridiculous is that and then you want to yoke me to that un, uh, uh, that that apparent uh, allegiance that I've never f fully given it's just pathetic that's all I can say this all needs to come down you the younger generation here in Canada you need to get concerned about all this because you know you guys are slaves you guys are servants you guys are subjects of the Queen in law instead of building a, a system that was for the for the human beings for the men and women that would be better for us and make a better place for us to live in Canada they've done all this to us and in 20 years from now I hate to see where this is going this is not a joke I'm going to be making some video shortly I'm going to be pulling out some articles of law that they have enacted for her subjects and for the Queen you know everything that you own everything that you go out and you work for and, and 
and, and right now possess and you think it belongs to you, it really doesn't. It does because you did put the hard work and energy into it. You bought it with the physical dollars and it's in your possession right now. But there are laws that are out there that give the queen the right to come and strip you of everything that you own. And, and why not? Like I'm saying to you, this is like a movie, just the way they've done this to us. And when you see uh, this on the Hollywood screen, you see, you know, the king declares something. And they, the soldiers go into the guy's house and they strip all that he owns and they throw him out and, and, and the like. Well, this is real. In law, here in Canada, there are laws and regulations and enactments that have been given force of law that everything that you own as a person, as that legal person, can be stripped away from you can be stripped away from you and for me to qualify it right now would make this video very very long but when I realized that it really impacted me I was like this is ridiculous it's it's disgusting and sad but it's ridiculous and most of us don't realize that so you can keep going on with your life and not really have any concern about what's going on in the laws and what they're actually doing to us but one day it might come back and hit you again uh, while I'm on this situation um, there's human beings here in Canada and in Quebec that have understood what has transpired uh, and are seeking to exercise their fundamental rights and freedoms. And of course here in Quebec again, uh, we're having the Chambre de Notary stand up and threaten notaries, threaten them to take away their license, their livelihood, because they are helping individuals with their claims of rights, with, with, with their documentation by keeping in a, in, in a public minute, so that if they ever had to go to court they could call that documentation to court and have a witness claiming that, listen, I'm standing as a human being, as a man and woman. I have my fundamental rights and freedoms backing me up. I refuse to take the designation of the Canadian citizen, of that person, because I have not pledged allegiance to the Queen Elizabeth II. I'm not her servant. I'm not her subject. I'm e unequal to her. I don't care that she has stolen uh, millions and millions of dollars from the rest of the earth and sits there on a, a pile of money and wipes her butt with the money that she has doesn't make her any different than me. If she falls down and breaks her bone, guess what? It's going to hurt just as much as mine. If she cuts her finger, guess what? It's going to bleed just as much as mine. If she catches a sickness or a disease, guess what? She may have some money extra to pay for medicine, but she's going to suffer just as much. So apart from her having a lot, a lot of more of uh, dollar bills and, and material wealth to her name, she's just an equal to me. And I will never pledge allegiance to her. I will never pledge allegiance to, to anyone, to nobody. I am a free human being, a free man, and I'm understanding that more and more as I live my life. And the more that I see people struggling uh, with this system, and it's all based in, in, in ridiculous laws. For example, I'll give you an example. Someone get, is getting a judgment, okay? I've seen this happening here in Quebec. Someone gets a judgment and says, you know, you're losing your house because you didn't pay the credit that you owed on the house, and now I want you to get out of the house, the judge says. The judge gives an, or an order. He says, I order you to leave, to get out of the house in 30 days or whatever it may be. But on that order, he has no article of law to back him up. Just because this judge has arbitrarily declared something as being, get out of the house within 30 days, then he, the, the justice system, the police, the bailiffs, and all the rest of that system will back up that judge's order. But that judge's order didn't, didn't come out of an article of law. It was just arbitrarily decided from him to throw somebody out of his house. That's the justice system that we have here nowadays. And uh, those who are caught up in capitalism and caught up in the system and don't have any understanding of what's transpiring with the banks, what's transpiring with our freedoms, uh, and they're just going with the flow and stuff, uh, they don't understand the, the devastation that's happening to their fellow man, to their fellow woman. Uh, when you know that most consumer notes, most uh, loans, most uh, credit card uh, that you're paying all these accounts have been created through electronic strokes on a the keyboard. There's no obligations, there's no liabilities, and there's no considerations that have been placed up by the bank. So you haven't put the bank out of anything, and they haven't really loaned you anything. They're just doing uh, imaginary transactions over the internet and saying, Ooh, who has the, bigger, the biggest account? Who has the more money? That's what's going on. But yet, men and women, real, flesh and blood, your mother, your father, your sisters, your grandfathers, your grandmothers, are suffering the consequences of this. And it may not be today, and it may not be next week, but it's going to come back on all of our shoulders if we don't do something about it. And it's not a, a one human being or a one man show. All of us need to begin to understand, here I am in Canada right now, and they do, uh, there's taxes on me, okay? I'm required to do this, I'm required to do this, I'm required to do that. 
Now, why is this so? And who gave them the right to put a, a leash around my neck with a collar and a chain and say, you do what I tell you because I say so? You're getting a little bit of an understanding through these videos because you're seeing exactly what they've done, and what they've done in the law in order to set this whole system up. But even if you understand all this and see all this, the question is like, why would you submit to all this? Why are we being forced to submit to all this? And why should this continue to go on? We are 33 million human beings, men and women here in Canada, a little bit more than that. There are some very intellectual and intelligent men and women here in Canada. We don't have to have a system like this. We don't have to um, operate under a system like this. I wish, I wish, I know I'm allowed to wish, I wish that those in position of power who had, you know, financial backings and, and seated in places of authority would, would get the desires to make a change here in Canada and, and, and to stop what is transpiring upon the people. Is it just a dream? Maybe. Because you, uh, a lot of men and women are asleep. They're asleep to what's going on in the law. They're asleep to what has transpired against them and they need to wake up. They need to be shooken not in a hard way, in a mean way, but they need to be shaken and, and woken up and to say, hey, listen, this is what's going on. Now, is, first of all, is this not crazy? And secondarily, do we want this to continue? Is this the way we, we envision Canada to be in a hundred years? We're in the law, we are, we are servants and subjects who have bowed down and given up our rights and freedoms, or, and, and the money and the wealth of Canada is being sucked out of our country, away from us, and given to the few? Because that's what's transpiring. Uh, what's more important, man, to put on some, some you know, uh, flashy, flashy clothes and go out to the clubs or, you know, to go out on the beach and take some sun or to go out and walk in nature? I think the, the students here in Quebec in the past couple of months, whether you agree with it or not, I think they had a, a, a good expression going on. Because you know what, if you understood what the law says, education is supposed to be free, all education. And even the fact that they're being charged a slight little bit of money for education is ridiculous because the covenants say that it's free. But it's more important for the Canadian politicians, the one who are reign, remember that in the beginning, are reign here? Those who control the wealth of this country to filter it out to the few than to take care of their own uh, citizens. Wake up. I don't know. I just feel wake up. You know, you go around and you and you talk and you talk to human beings. You talk to men and women about this. And me, I get received very well. I don't know what it is, but I talk to others who who try to share this and oh conspiracy. Oh uh, no, no, this is not true. It can't be happening without ever going in and looking into the law, without ever going in and studying and see what what is being said and declared. But no, nope, it couldn't be. But yet, you know, you're still going to go home and you're still going to pay taxes and you're still going to be bound up and every demand that they make on you and every way that they want to control you, they can. What if they enact an enactment tomorrow? And I'm going to be ridiculous here, but I'm just going to give you an example. They enact an enactment tomorrow that says everyone has to serve one certain God. There's a whole bunch of, of the Christian world, the Christian denomination that believe in the Antichrist is coming and... Uh, and you know it's going to be one world religion and stuff okay so let's say what if they enact an enactment that says you have to serve this one god that's coming the one world system and, and they put it into law through their enactments and their regulations are you going to are you going to submit to it are you going to bow down to it depending on your religious belief the question here is not if it's real if i believe in the bible if that's going to happen or not or whatever the question is how far can they take this the question is how far can they use this system to strip us of our rights and freedoms from the rights and freedoms that we had, that were granted to us, that were, I don't want to say granted to us, that were recognized. Because our human rights and freedoms, our fundamental rights and freedoms, they, they weren't really granted to us, they were recognized. And we can, we can add to that. There's nothing that says that what's been declared in, and the covenants expressed now is the end all situation. We can add to this, to those who, who, who understand all this, to change what's transpiring now. I personally, I don't have children. And... I'm not attached to my life, so if I pass away, and I, when I pass away, whenever it will be, and I leave this system behind, it doesn't bother me. It's for the future generations. 
It's for those that are continuing on. The way it's going now, I can't see it being something positive, something that is good, something that is going to lead a hundred years down the road or even ten years down the road to a better society, to a, a society free of poverty. I think that's an honorable goal as all of us living here in Canada, sharing the land, sharing what's been created in this, in this commercial system. I think a great goal would be to eliminate poverty. They, they couldn't do it in the past 40 years. What makes to say they're going to do it in 10 years with the system that they have? It's not a lack of wealth here in Canada. It's a lack of focus and direction where that wealth is going to and what it's being attributed to. And, and greatly and more importantly the fact that we as human beings and men and women have been stripped of our fundamental rights and freedoms and they don't have to honor them here in Canada because we're considered persons until we step up and say hang on a second uh, you, you're, uh, you've stripped me and you've removed a lot of things intrinsic to my nature to who I am and uh, what gave you the right to do that and the only thing they could ever come back on is truly you gave your allegiance. Well, when? I never did. Well, yeah, you did. Because they signed it into law. Your parents just, by that birth certificate, just transferred on over that allegiance to the Queen. And I can go on. Fill out your taxes. There's a transferation right there of you pledging your allegiance back to the Queen, contracting with her again, claiming to be her subject. So, I mean, I can, I can you know, uh, go and uh, lie on my couch and rest my back on a heating pad, which will be great, you know. Or maybe if I feel up to it, depends how I'm feeling, I can go and, and, and fish a little bit, you know, go catch a fish. It'll make, you know, depends how I feel, there you go again. But what's it going to change, you know? Uh, you can go watch a movie. You can go and enjoy the entertainments of the world. But what's it going to change? You know, I see a hunger in, 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 in certain individuals, and I guess those who keep watching my video, that's they, they're expressing hungers too. It's going to take a greater level. And you know, sometimes it's like it's, it is just easier to say, well, you know what, let's go fishing. You know, or let's go lie on the couch type of thing. Because it's, it's not that it's an uphill battle. I've never been one to say, well, you know, it's an uphill battle or, you know, I got to fight against the current and, oh, oh, that's too hard. No, 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 no. It's just sad. It's just sad to see how much uh, we don't know who we are and how much we don't know what's been afforded to us or what's there for us in the law. But we know the latest singer and, you know, the latest styles of clothing. And, uh, and I'm not saying that that's really all that bad, okay? But what I'm saying is that those are all uh, inferior uh, information. To understand and to know what's going on here in Canada, what is there for you to operate under and what they've done to you and how the system is in operation. So why is it that when you're walking down the street, the police officer can call you over and say, produce me some ID, I want to see what you're doing or I want to know your name, your person. Why is it? And why is it that at the end of the year they can send you a tax form and they say, well, you're obligated to pay taxes as an individual, a natural person, an artificial person, a corporation, you must pay these taxes. And why is it when you're, you're in need, you're in need, if you, you've lost your job, you don't have unemployment insurance, even if you do, it's only 55%, you go to welfare and they give you $500 a month. You can barely pay for your, for your apartment, let alone buy food uh, or pay for electricity or pay for transportation. And all on the other side of that, if you would see the wealth that is just filtering out of our country, just filtering away from us, away from the human beings, while the human beings suffer. But it's more, like I said, it's more important right now to uh, self, to absorb yourself in self, uh, entertain yourself, uh, go enjoy yourself, and there's a lot of people that are talking about a shift in the consciousness that's going to be happening uh, in the coming years or, or months or whatever, away from the self into a, a, like, you know, not a global consciousness because then, you know, careful, someone's going to say, uh, uh, 
a global consciousness, one world government, oh, it's satanic, oh, antichrist and Christians, and no. Just saying that instead of instead of focusing on just yourself and oh I got the bucks I got the sports car and got the nice clothes and where's the flash of the good-looking women you know to go entertain myself it's gonna be like well you know I wonder how that man's doing and I wonder how that woman's doing and I wonder how my family members even doing while I'm rolling around in the BMW or rolling around in, in, in money that's the change that 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 a lot of human beings are longing for and thinking about because it, if we could imagine having people who who want to share or want to make a change or want to spread out the wealth in positions of power like it's sad but I know it sounds it sounds crazy but Bill Gates he's, he's one man one individual and his wealth is not real you can't take it all the money that he owns you couldn't take it and put it in dollar bills on a table or put it in gold on a table you can't express that, okay, in, in something physical because a lot of it is electronic. But nevertheless, he could take a portion of that wealth that he has and he alone could eliminate poverty or could put the plans into existence to eliminate poverty. One man on the world right now, but he doesn't do it. Why? Hey, if anybody knows Bill Gates and is a friend of his and happens to be watching this video, pass it on up. And I would like to know, why don't you eliminate poverty from this world? You, 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 you're concerned about uh, uh, keeping a certain number of children, euthanasia, or keeping a certain number of children coming out of, of women, keeping track of population. You invest money into that heavily, but you don't take care of the poverty in our world. Just a question, because if I was in your position, and I know a lot of people, well, shouldn't use that, I know a lot of human beings, if they were in your position, and I know them personally, these human beings, they would do the same thing. They would take care of the poverty and the hell with the advancement of other projects. I guess the, as, as, a, as a man, I love science. You have to understand that about me because science has done a lot, a lot for man. 80 years ago, 90 years ago, how were we living? What did we have in our houses? I wouldn't even be able to do this with, this with the technology that I have nowadays. Technology and science has advanced the health like medical industry. It's, wow, okay, it's done a lot for us. But we could have done all that, all that, without having all this. We could have done all that and more because all this wealth that has been gone out of our country and siphoned out of our country, we could have put it more back into science, back into the medical industry, back into taking care of the human beings. But we didn't. So we're getting a system now that is based upon debt. Based upon debt. And it has to have you, as, as a consumer, run and ask for debt in order to create accounts in order to create spending and if they don't have you asking for debt to create accounts for spending then the system's going to collapse in on itself that's why they keep all the interest rates low right now what we're going through in canada because they need us they need the human beings they need their pledges to go and, and get credit and go spend go consume go buy goods because if you buy something then they have to produce it or they have to import it it makes the system go but if they don't give you credit you don't have enough money to go buy goods when you just work. Of course not, because your work is not honored. You see, while you chase after material goods, and here's another fundamental right and a, and, a, and a freedom that you have as a human being, but as you chase after material goods as a person, buying it on credit and paying it back slowly and indebting yourself up to here and losing maybe all of it if you can't pay it back. As a human being, when you work, there's articles of law that says that you have the right to have a good, good salary when you work, regardless of whatever work you do. And if you knew how to defend yourself as a, even a person, you could go before the law, before the courts and say, hey, listen, I'm doing a job at McDonald's, but I'm entitled to a better pay than I'm getting. Well, what do you mean? You're getting minimum salary or a little bit more. And that's, that's what everybody gets. Well, I don't care what everybody gets. These are my rights and freedoms. I'm supposed to have earn, earn earn enough living because I've chosen to earn a living actually you're probably in deception but anyways I've chosen to earn a living and as such I'm allowed 
I'm allowed to have uh, uh, that you secure the fact that I have a proper salary that guarantees me my rights and freedoms. In my minimum salary, I can barely pay my apartment, I can pay for my food, I can pay for my hydro, and I can pay for my telephone. And that's about it. Everything else that I own right now, my, my clothes and you know, uh, my, my car and uh, perhaps other things that I own, I all bought it with credit. And I'm paying it all back. And it's eating up all my money. And, and my, my living condition is deteriorating and it's not improving. And you as a human being have a right to the improvement of your living condition. But yet you've been placed in a position where your living condition is not improving now. It's deteriorating. 